Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stereo Launch video and today I'm going to be answering a question that I've gotten from multiple viewers just like you. How do I connect my electronic drum kit to my computer so that I can play easy drummer sounds from my electronic drum kit? Today I'm going to show you how I do that. All right, so as you can tell from that clip, I'm not really much of a drummer. I can kind of get around well enough for my needs. I'm much more consider myself a guitar player. But I do find that the electronic drum kit is a very helpful uh, songwriting tool for getting the parts I hear in my head, whether it be a certain drum pattern or a drum fill or whatever, something like that. Sometimes it's easier just to play it on here and get it close enough than it is to uh, sit there and write it out like kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, 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 hi-hat, 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 crash, crash, you know, every single measure that gets kind of tedious. And then sometimes it's just hard to find a, a, a MIDI file, um, an easy drummer that matches exactly what I want. Sometimes you can find something close enough and just tweak it, but a lot of times I find it easier just to go ahead and play what I hear in my head and then fix the timing and miss triggers or bad stick or whatever, you know all that sloppy stuff as a guitar player that I play on drums. Anyway, so this is my basic normal recording setup where I have my electronic drums here. This is a Roland TD3. It's really old, but all the same things apply to newer kits as well. And then I have my Pro Tools rig over there with Easy Drummer running right now. And since it's kind of far away, it looks further in the frame there, but it's really only about six or seven feet away. But I find it handy to keep my, at least my keyboard here. It's wireless. I can do a lot of my commands from here. And then sometimes I have to bring my mouse over if I'm needing to mute or unmute or whatever on certain things. But I have that right here. That way I don't have to keep getting up and down and up and down and up and down. I've had to do that before and it's super frustrating and annoying and makes things take longer. So this is super handy to have. So as far as how I hook this up, it's really pretty straightforward with this setup. I also have a new MacBook Pro that I just got and just installed Pro Tools and Studio One and GarageBand. I'm gonna show you how to set all that up with a fresh new install and how to do it on a laptop. It's a little bit different, but basically the same thing. All right, so essentially, we wanna get the MIDI out of this drum set, specifically our sound module, over there. So all we really need to do is take a MIDI cable and you plug that into the output of my sound module because we're going to send our MIDI out. So that's going to go in this cable and I have it running against the wall and all the way around and then that plugs into the back of my Focusrite Claret 8 Pre back there. It has a MIDI input and a MIDI output but for this we only need the MIDI input. So the cable plugs into the input and then from there the, there's a USB cable that comes out that carries all the audio, but also carries that MIDI also. That goes in the computer, and if you have the right settings in your, on your software, that'll trigger Easy Drummer. Then also, another thing, since we're listening to the sounds from Easy Drummer instead of off our sound module, we need to run a headphone output from our interface, and I have that running again around there and around the wall and up to here. And then I have headphones here so I can hear the easy drummer sounds because I'm not interested in the sound module sounds. So, but that way it also allows me to hear the music and the click track and all that stuff as well. So quick overview. The basics are MIDI out to MIDI in, goes in the computer, does its stuff. Then comes headphone output all the way back to me and I can play along. All right, so as you can see, I've changed things up a little bit here. I've brought my MacBook Pro over. Um, we're no longer going through my main recording rig. Um, so we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna 
plug more directly into the uh, computer. So last time we went through the Focusrite Claret 8 Pre right there, which is a full-blown interface, and a lot of smaller interfaces also have MIDI inputs and outputs. But if you don't have an interface like that at all, you can do something like this. This I found this on Amazon for 15 bucks. This is a MIDI to USB interface. So it's by a company called Foray. It seems to work pretty well. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to this. But it's got your MIDI input and output connections. Just the same as on the back of that Focusrite, but these are just cables now. And then it's also got a USB connector. It's USB type A. And um, because I have one of the newer MacBook Pros, I'm going to have to use the USB dongle uh, A to C. So after this, it's basically the same thing. And then we'll talk about details of how to set up software and stuff like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my MIDI in cable because, we, again, we're going to go from the output of the sound module right, to the input of our interface. This is acting as our interface now, and it's all tangled up. All right, and then I'm just going to take this and plug it into the USB-C port on my computer, and that's basically how you connect it. Now, as far as setting up the software, let's take a look at that. So we can pull up our Easy Drummer here. This is the standalone version. As you can hear, we have our you know drum sounds. This is coming through my speakers right now. All right, I'm just clicking on that with the mouse to get it set up, so you can use your drum kit with it. You want to come up here to Audio MIDI Setup and Settings. And on your um, Mac, Core Audio is going to be selected by default. MacBook Pro Speakers. I have not gotten this to play through the headphones just by default on the standalone Easy Drummer. Um, but I may just be missing something. Buffer size, you're going to want it no higher than 128, ideally 64. It just at 128, sometimes it can feel a little laggy. Um, 64 feels more concise. And then with output channels, keep those on one and two. That's your, your standard output channels there. MIDI device, if uh, this is not checked yet, you want to check USB MIDI interface. Uh, if you're using a different interface, it may say something different here. But that's what it says if you use this little foray. Uh, interface. And as far as MIDI channels, I leave that on any right there. Hit OK. And then you can just use your sticks. All right? And now we're connected and playing into the Easy Drummer standalone software. So pretty basic setup there. So let's uh, go ahead and set things up with GarageBand. And there's probably better ways to do this, but I don't use GarageBand hardly ever. So you're going to have to bear with me if there's a better way of doing this. All right, so I'm just going to create, I'm going to choose software instrument. All right, so now I've created a software. Um, so I've created a software track, and it comes up with this classic electric piano by default. <laughs> which actually you can play with the drums. Right, it's just MIDI, you're just controlling it. So you can do that, but that's probably not exactly what you want. So come down here to plugins, E piano, easy drummer. And it'll take a second to load. And now it's loaded, easy drummer in there. Right, and so there's that. And then also with this, I can also hear it through the headphones. So if I plug, so if I plug my headphones in. Now 
now I can hear that through the headphones. So GarageBand really kind of just does a lot of it for you. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you wanted to look at the settings, preferences, right? And now I got my output devices set to external headphones and it automatically detected the MIDI interface. So I didn't have to do anything there. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy and all that stuff. Yeah, so that's GarageBand. So now let's try Pro Tools. Let's create a new one and let's call this Easy Drummer Test. All right, create that. That's fine. Now we're here in Easy Drummer and we are just going to create a new stereo instrument track and name we call it drums great and there it is add an instance of easy drummer and let's see where we're at So it's not doing anything right now. And it's not seeing that. So since we're not hearing anything right now, that means Pro Tools is not seeing our MIDI input. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, but there's a helpful web page on Avid's Pro Tools site that kind of walks you through all these steps and we're gonna follow those. There are a couple things that page talks about doing. So it says to go to Setup Peripherals MIDI controller. So we go setup peripherals MIDI controllers and it says to make sure that all of these are none. Um, these are only used if you're using a certain type of like MIDI controller or whatever. Um, I've had QE interface controllers where it's got you know faders or whatever that can control stuff and you use that there but we're not using that for this so make sure those are set to none which they should be by default. Also, go to MIDI devices. So, cancel out of that. Now, I go up to setup MIDI input devices right here. And that should be checked. And it is. So, okay. And then this one's kind of the tricky one setup preferences. And then over to MIDI default through instruments I have my I usually set my right now set to none so if I set it to easy drummer um, that will set it so that your default MIDI instrument is easy drummer um, you could also choose follows first selected MIDI track so what that does is when you select a track that has like a MIDI instrument on it it will uh, trigger that MIDI instrument So now we can hear Easy Drummer. And then one thing else that says to check is to go to Options and make sure MIDI Through is checked. You want that checked. If not, that kills your MIDI. So you want to go back to MIDI, make sure MIDI Through is on. Okay, so right now, also, one last final step is that I'm hearing this through my speakers, so you can probably hear them too, right, um, is go up to Options, I'm sorry, Setup, down to Playback Engine, and see right now it's still set up on MacBook Pro speakers, if you go to External Headphones, Click yes, it will do all this. It's got to restart. <clears throat> and once it comes back up, I can hear it through my headphones, but you can't. So yeah, now it's through my headphones. So now I can play along and record and all that stuff like normal. So those are the steps for Pro Tools. A little more complicated than GarageBand was and uh, all that stuff, but that's it. Again, I will leave the link in the description below. 
that kind of walks you through all those different steps and other troubleshooting ideas as well. All right, so let's do a quick setup in Studio One. Um, as you can see, I'm running the demo version. I downloaded it, checking it out. I've used Pro Tools forever and ever and ever, checking out Studio One as an option. So it's open. Let's create a new song. And let's create an empty song here. Doesn't matter what it's called. So it probably looks like this when you come into Studio One. You can click on instruments here. One of the great things about Studio One, you see like, I already have this open, but Easy Drummer right here. You just drag and drop it on here and it'll open up Easy Drummer, created instrument track and all that stuff for you. Where Pro Tools, you have to go and choose all that stuff. Uh, Studio One just does it for you. So that's super handy. So I can click on this and hear it, right? But if I use my drum kit, nothing happens. So we need to hook up our MIDI stuff. So it's similar to Pro Tools, but again, it's even easier. What we're gonna do is Studio One here, click on Preferences, and you want to go to External Devices, and this will probably be empty. So just click Add, uh, Receive From. Right here, so USB MIDI interface, that's what mine says. Again, it's just that cheap MIDI interface. You may say something different, but you select whatever it is you're using. You can name it here if you want. So I'm just gonna call it the Foray MIDI interface. Can't spell, all right, or whatever. That's fine right there. Um, so now you can see it's been added, so we know what that is. And then also we got to go to audio setup here and you can see it's still saying MacBook Pro speakers just like it has before. Click on external headphones right there. And if you leave it on the MacBook Pro speakers, obviously you can hear it through the speakers. But if I do headphones, click OK and put my headphones on. And then, yep, I can hear it. You probably can't hear it, but that's... That's pretty much it. Fairly simple setup on Studio One. And uh, yeah, you can start recording and go to town with that. All right, so there we go. Hopefully you found that helpful, you know, just going through setting up the different connections and going through the different software and stuff like that. If you don't have Pro Tools or GarageBand or Studio One, whatever software you have, it should be fairly similar because there's kind of some similarities going through each one. Um, so hopefully that helps you set it up even if you use something else. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them in the comments section below. And as always, hit subscribe and the notification bell so you can get notified the next time some videos come out. I'm going to do more videos around songwriting, recording, um, and all that stuff. I'm recording some EPs and uh, just lots of good stuff around all that. And if you're really into electronic drum kits, make sure you check out 65 Drums. It's a YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it yet, Justin over there, he does a really good job of reviewing and talking about different drum kits of different brands, all the way from the low ones, all the way to the high end kits and all that stuff and everything in between and mixes and matches and experiments and all kinds of good stuff. So if you're into electronic drum kits, make sure you check out 65 Drums. Not affiliated with him in any way. He just got some good content. And also, while we're here, if you happen to record electric guitars, whether you play guitar or you have someone that comes in and plays guitars, and uh, cranking up the tube amp and sticking a microphone in front of it, like you know we used to do back in the day, if that's not really an option for you because of the volume issue, which it's an issue for me, maybe you live in an apartment, maybe you have neighbors that complain, uh, maybe the only time you can record is that late at night and the kids are asleep or whatever it is, check out my free guide, five ways to record loud guitars at home without upsetting the neighbors or waking the kids. It just goes through several different ways you can record guitars and get some massive, really great guitar tones, and but do it silently or mostly silently. That way, again, you don't upset the neighbors or the kids don't wake up when it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and that's the only time you can record and you can still get your songs down. So make sure you check that out, stereolaunch.com slash loudguitars. And again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.